When the largest carnivore in the world decides to call you its dinner, you have two choices, fight or run. Gene Mo chose to fight. Kodiak Island sits on the severe but beautiful south coast of Alaska, USA. Crisscrossed with sparkling rivers and ice-cold bays, the island is famous for its salmon, which in the summer months bring fishermen from all over the world. But this place is famous for another reason. The northern half of the island is carpeted in a dense mountainous forest, and in the forest, bears. But not just any bear. The Kodiak bear is the biggest carnivore in the world. On average, slightly larger than the polar bear, Kodiak bears belong to the brown bear variety, which is common throughout Alaska and North America. But it's their distinctive diet that makes them so massive. Yep, you guessed it, salmon. These mighty behemoths are lucky enough to have their own high-protein superfood right on their doorstep. This allows them to get extra huge. They are basically the bodybuilders of the animal world. In peak season, the adult males can weigh as much as 635 kilograms or 1400 pounds and stand up to three meters, 9.8 feet, when on two legs. That's roughly as heavy as a grand piano and as half as tall as a giraffe. Not something you'd want to get into fisticuffs with. But that's exactly what happened to veteran hunter Gene Mo on November 1st, 1999. Gene had been out hunting along the ridge of the Kodiak Woods, just as he'd done for many years. He'd seen plenty of bears before and even had some frightening encounters. But nothing had prepared him for the epic battle he was about to have with the biggest man-eater on planet Earth. As he made his way through the forest, he noticed several deep gouges along the bark of a tree. Gene thought the rips looked like they'd been made by a chainsaw, not an animal. He knew this was a bear's way of marking its territory, and he resolved to get as far away as fast as possible. But it wasn't that simple. Gene had spent all day stalking a deer, and the trail took him round in wide circle, so that when he eventually caught up with his prey, he was right back in the beast territory. Unfortunately, by that point, he was too caught up in the hunt to notice. This was his first big mistake. The sky was growing dark when he finally shot and killed the deer. At least, he thought. A hard day's hunt. He leaned his rifle against a log and started skinning the deer next to a stream, a little way off. This was his second big mistake. As Gene peacefully began to cut the hide away from the deer's succulent flesh, the scent of blood and gore wafted into the summer evening breeze. It wasn't long before that scent reached the sharp nostrils of a nearby Kodiak bear. That's the thing about bears some of the best hunters in the food chain, but they will just as happily steal someone else's lunch. Gene was about to go from hunter to hunted. One minute he was bent over, meticulously trimming the skin for the deer. The next, he heard a sound that would stay with him for the rest of his life. A bear's roar, so loud it shook the trees. The beast came out of the forest with the force of a steam train, knocking Gene hard to the ground and clawing at his throat with vicious sharp talons. Gene was engulfed in the bear's massive bulk. Its fur filled his mouth and eyes, and he was completely disoriented. He couldn't see. He couldn't breathe. He couldn't scream. It was like the worst bear hug in the world. Luckily, he still had his knife in his hand and he jabbed again and again in the creature's thick hide, but to no avail. The bear got hold of his arm in its jaws and crunched down. The pain was all-encompassing, but somehow he had the presence of mind to keep stabbing and kicking the animal. Gene was wearing big, heavy mountain boots, and they probably saved his life because, miraculously, he was able to kick the half-ton creature off of him.
He got up fast and looked around. The sensation of being able to see, to breathe, overwhelmed him more than the pain. For a moment, he thought he'd die in that bear hug. But his euphoria didn't last long. He saw, with a sinking heart, his gun still leaning against the log where he'd left it, too far away. He'd never reach it before the bear was on top of him again. If the bear got him on the ground again, he wouldn't be getting up. So he turned away from his gun and stabbed instead into the creature's neck, trying to slit its throat. Adrenaline pulsed through his body. Every nerve screamed that it wanted to live. But the muscles of the bear's neck were too thick, like tree roots, and he only managed to make a deep gash across its front. At this, the bear roared, spilling blood onto the moss, and lunged at Jean with all its might. Again, Jean was lucky. Like a prized bullfighter, he stepped aside at the very last minute, and the bear missed him by centimeters. Seeing his moment, he brought the blade sharp down as hard as he could on the beast's back, exactly where he knew the vertebrae was. The knife went in. Jean's heartbeat stopped for a minute. The bear roared. Obviously, badly wounded, the beast moved away, circling around. Gene didn't dare move. He wiped the blood from his eyes with his good arm. His other arm was crushed and useless. He could feel the beginnings of severe agony from a dozen lashes across his body. He knew that if the bear came in for another attack, he would almost certainly die. He looked into the bear's eyes and decided that only one thing would save him now. And that thing was God. Lord, Gene said out loud, please help me, Lord. I need help. Just at that moment, the bear came in again. It seemed to move slowly this time, and blood spilled out of its fur as it jumped forward. Gene acted without thinking. Dropping his knife, he swung his good arm back into a wide arc and brought it down with all the strength he had left in his body. His fist hit the bear's nose so hard it broke his hand in several places. But the bear went down. It bounced once, then its enormous head came to rest on a patch of moss. Gene thought, is it dead? He hobbled over and grabbed his gun. He meant to shoot the beast, but his hands were both bloody and numb. They hurt so much he couldn't pull the trigger. Fortunately, the animal was already dead. But Gene's incredible story doesn't end there. He knew he was losing a lot of blood and needed to get off the island and to a hospital as quickly as possible. Again, he prayed, asking for the strength to get down to the beach where his friend had a boat. And again, his prayers were answered. The trip was anything but easy. Coming down off that mountain was the hardest thing he'd ever done. A total of three times, Gene lay down in the moss to die. But every time he prayed to God and got up again. Eventually, he reached the shore. His friend helped him to a nearby cabin from where they were able to call a helicopter. It took Gene a month of rehab, two skin grafts, and 500 stitches before he made a full recovery. But in the end, he came out better than the bear, which was later recovered and skinned. Till this day, Gene Moe has that bear skin hanging on his wall.